How are we doing guys? Welcome back to AFC Game by Game. These are my thoughts following Arsenal to Tottenham 2, the final results in the North London derby. I have to say coming out of the game immediately I'm feeling quite disappointed and underwhelmed with the chances we had in that second half and I don't know, I just I just feel really gutted with that result to be honest. I know that coming back from 2-0 down to to get it back to 2-2, that, that shows real courage from this team and I love the way that this Arsenal side showed such determination to not lose this game to Spurs. It says a lot about a team that we're able to do that but individual errors costing us once again and the, the players we had going forward, the chances we had in this game to, to get the win, I'm really disappointed I've got to say but um, 7 points from opening 12 games, we've got Liverpool and Spurs out of the way. Uh, we've had a win on the road against Newcastle. There's a lot of positive to take from this Arsenal team and I've, I'm sure after two weeks of the international break um, we'll come back against Watford who are bottom of the league and, and put in a good showing. I'm, I do feel good about this Arsenal side. A lot of positives but as well it would be wrong to not highlight some of the negatives that we saw in this Arsenal side today. The first one being, and I know this will divide a lot of opinions, but the team lineup I thought was a bit disjointed. I thought the front three was, it was the front three I wanted to see start, the front three we all wanted to see start, Aubameyang, Pepe and Lacazette. I thought Lacazette was exceptional for the time he was on the pitch, just looked knackered towards the end of the game when he came off uh, towards the end. Um, I thought Aubameyang was, was brilliant. Um, he tried to get into every single position. He, he just was everywhere across that front line. I thought he was really, really good. Nicola Pepe, out of sorts game, I thought. And I'm not going to criticise him because every player, whether they're a record signing or a £2 million signing, they're going to take time to adapt. Since he started against Liverpool and he started against Spurs. Those have been his only two starts in the Premier League. So he got the assist for, for Lacazette's goal, albeit that was pretty much all Lacazette's own work for that goal. But I'm still very excited by this guy. His skill is exceptional. He's the most skillful player we've got in this Arsenal team, apart from Danny Ceballos, who was running the show when he came on. But Nicola Pepe, not his best game for me, but I still think there's a lot to come from this guy. But it was the front three that we all wanted to see start. I just felt that we lacked that link up between the midfields and the front three. It was, it, you know, it was um, a compact midfield. We saw Guinduzi, Torreira and Granite Jackers start, but there was no real link. There was no Ceballos, there was no Widdock, there was no Ozil. Um, I think if we start this game with one of those three players then you see a different performance from the front three, possibly a, a much different performance from Nicola Pepe because we we needed someone to thread those balls through. We were we were relying a lot on Granite Jacker, David Luiz picking out those passes, uh, which they did on a couple of occasions and it did look really good at times, but we just lacked someone getting into that final third, providing that killer pass. Um, I really think that was really the downfall in this game. It works for Liverpool where they've got not really a number 10 because Firmino is so good at being that player that drops back and allows the likes of Mane and Salah to run beyond him. Lacazette isn't really that kind of player. He's a striker, whereas Firmino is more of a traditional centre forward who sits that little bit deeper. Um, I think they're two very different players and I don't think that Liverpool setup is going to work for us with those current players playing in that formation. So I'd, I'd much rather see us play a 4-2-3-1 as opposed to a 4-3-3 and play of a proper number 10 or at least someone that's going to play in front of Torreira and Jacka or Torreira and whoever because I don't think Jack is going to be getting... Uh, too many fans after his performance today, and I guess that's the next thing I want to talk about. Um, Granit Xhaka's performance, we might as well get this out of the way pretty quickly because uh, it's not a particularly positive talking point. Giving away the penalty, um, first of all, was what he does best. Um, he, we've seen this time and time again from him, and if we're looking at someone like Scott Mustafi, who's been exiled from the Arsenal team because of the stupid individual errors he made last season, Granit Jack has started this season in spectacular fashion if he wants to, to, to you know, follow in Mustafi's shadow, which um, would be a real shame because I do think Granit Xhaka offers a lot when he's, he's playing well, but I think you've got to accept if you're going to play and then you're opening, you're opening yourself up to letting go of a goal every single game because it's just it's the 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 penalty he gave away was was unbelievably poor from him you could see it a mile off what Winks was going to do and so he's just rushed in and just made a completely unnecessary challenge and not really given the referee an option in that situation so I'm immensely disappointed in Granite Jacker I have to say he's a guy that I've predicted to start in a lot of games this campaign and I think whilst he's fit there's a real chance that he's going to be starting in this Arsenal team. I think there's a very high likelihood that he will. And the fact that he's our captain as well, not officially, but he wears the armband when he's on the pitch. Um, it's not great, and it's not a great way to lead by example. And the number of fouls he gave away in this game, the number of times he lost the ball in possession, it was a very, very off day from Granite Jacker. And uh, I am starting to question whether this guy is actually any better than he was when we first got him. It's his fourth season at Arsenal now. 
That's, that's quite a lot of scenes in the Premier League. And he's just not looking any better than he was when he first came into this team. And that, that does cause me a lot of concern. As I say, I like what he does when he plays well. But it's his negatives definitely outweigh his positives because we do concede way too many goals because of his individual errors. Um, so I think for me, Guendouzi, based on his performance, he could potentially look to be that player that fills in for where Granit Xhaka currently plays and then play him alongside Lucas Torreira, who I... I don't think Torreira had a particularly great game today. He seems to be slipping and sliding all over the place, but he, was, he, he wasn't he was as bad as Granit Xhaka was. So maybe Guendouzi Torreira uh, with Willock or Ceballos ahead of them this season could be the could be the midfield. And then, of course, we've got Mesut Ozil in there as well. So, yeah, um, it's going to be interesting to see how Granit Xhaka's future at Arsenal does develop it, but we can't we we just we can't continue to play him if he's going to make those stupid errors. It's uh, it's just not viable in the Premier League. Um, but of course, he's not the only one that did it. The uh, the defence, Socrates and Louise, has it, it, in my opinion is a horrendous partnership. I'm not, I've got to be brutally honest. I know a lot of people are seemingly thinking that's our strongest partnership, but I just have no faith or belief in that back two at all. I really don't rate them as a pairing. Um, I think it's going to be one or the other if we're going to be, be be playing them this season. When holding's back, I want to see him slot in pretty much immediately for one of those two. Um, I'd, and I'd much rather see Callum James get a bit more game time because we don't, apart from Louise, we don't really have a ball playing centre-half and Louise's expertise is playing it long. We need someone to play it a bit shorter at times. So I'd love to see Callum Chambers come in for that game against Watford for one of the two. They just don't complement each other. They're both very, very erratic. David Louise is still taking time to adjust this Arsenal side. Socrates was a bit rash today, a bit more rash than usual. Wasn't helped, of course, by Harry Kane uh, diving all over the place. And it's amazing that he actually stayed on the pitch at the end of the game because that dive he made was awful. England captain, it's um yeah, it's just it's just inexcusable from Harry Kane to be honest. And he, it's not just us he does it against. He's done it so many times this season already and we're four games in. So it says a lot about Harry Kane and um you know I'd probably like him quite a bit more if he if he got that out of his game. But um yeah I mean to be two 0 down that first half um I mean it's the first goal we conceded was Really, really poor, especially given that we were so on top on the in the game at that point. And then after that goal, Spurs really started to uh, have the lion's share of possession, and then making it two 0 through that poor, um, poor tackle from Granit Xhaka, which then inevitably led to the penalty, which Harry Kane was always going to score. So it was essential that um, Lacazette got that goal before half time and getting it right on the stroke of half time. Great, great finish from him. Great work, and it's. Um, it's, it's another great goal that he scored this season and I think he's going to be such an important asset to this Arsenal team and I think a lot of people are, are so, I don't think he's underappreciated as such but if you're looking at that front three of Aubameyang, Pepe and Lacazette he's probably the one that gets the least um, the least love I suppose and I think he's such an important player to this Arsenal team in the way he holds up the ball um, the way he, his finishing is exceptional as well so he's a very important player for me and to get that goal um, shows exactly what he's all about as a character so that was great and then going out into that second half um, we really started like a house on fire we really should have scored earlier on in that second half but it did take a little while for Guendouzi to play that ball through to Aubameyang to cut through that stubborn Tottenham side and a uh, brilliant ball and then a brilliant brilliant finish from Aubameyang to make it 2-2 and then I'm just gutted that we couldn't go on to to finish it, finish the job to make it 3-2, but I can't complain with 2-2 given given how the game started and given how poor we were in that opening 45 minutes, but I do think had Emery got it right from the first minute, um, I've got to say I'm a bit concerned about the team selections he's putting out because evidently he doesn't know his best starting eleven. neither do we to be honest, I don't think we know exactly what's going to work, but when Bellerin and Tierney come back into the sides, when Holding comes back into the team, I think it's, it, you know, it's very underappreciated that we are still uh, a team that's missing three players that will start in this Arsenal side when they're fit so there's that to appreciate and of course um, Danny Sabas when he came on was fantastic I thought he really changed the game and I love his enthusiasm I love his passion for the game he was really really good when he came on and I think he's got to start against Watford he was he was fantastic had an off game against Liverpool we can all all agree on that but apart from that brilliant for the 20 minute spell he was on the pitch and Mkhitaryan came on I don't think he was awful I don't think he was great either but uh, yeah I mean um Positives and negatives to take from today. A big, big learning curve, but we've done well to get a point out of what was a looking like a horrible game at one point. So yeah, those are my thoughts on it. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments box below. That's all I've got to say, really. Drop a like on the video if you have enjoyed it. Subscribe to AFC Game by Game if you're new to the channel. And uh, yeah, international break already upon us. Hate to say it, but that's the way football is. I'll see you in two weeks' time, guys. See you later.